Hello everyone, today we are talking about weather. Although before we get started on weather, we're going to make a quick discussion about heat and temperature. So before you get too far into this booklet, I do want you to go back, check out those earlier questions. There's a set of questions here that uh, give you some idea about all the things that we're going to be able to talk about by the time you're done this unit. And otherwise, we will carry through into this first lesson on temperature and heat. So in terms of weather, we need to think about temperature and heat as being two separate concepts, since heat is the thing that we get from the sun, and that is what eventually becomes and causes all of the different temperatures that we experience on the planet and all of the different weather we experience. So we need to be very clear at the beginning that heat is not temperature. We often convolute the two, we mix the two ideas together. The two concepts are the same the, because we think of things that have a lot of heat are very hot, so they have a, a high temperature, but those are not the, uh, they're not the same thing, they are connected. So uh, the example we use here is, uh, well, let's follow this statement. Perhaps the reason the two are usually and incorrectly thought to be the same is because as human beings on Earth, our everyday experience leads us to notice that when you add heat to something, say pouring a, putting a pot of, of water on the stove, then the temperature of that something goes up. More heat, more temperature. They, this does not mean they're the same thing. This is a correlation. The more heat we put in, the more temperature we get out, but that doesn't, that's not, uh, that's not exactly uh, saying that heat and temperature are the same thing. A hot day does tend to typically have a high temperature, but uh, we'll see that there's some, uh, some um, things we have to consider. So heat is specifically talking about energy, and this uh, relates back to physics when you go into a physics course in the next uh, level, you'll find that we talk a lot about heat. And even in our, bio our chemistry courses, we'll talk a lot about heat. So heat is energy. Heat can do two different things to particles, uh, particles being matter. So maybe we'll put a little note here, right? We're talking about the building blocks of our world. So this is matter. This could be gas, this, is, this could be particles that are in a gas, particles in a liquid, particles in a solid. They make those particles move faster, and they can also, if you add energy, you can weaken the bonds between particles, which can cause them to change phases, like in melting or boiling. And we even have seen extreme examples in chemical reactions like combustion, where adding heat can weaken the bonds inside of the particles, inside of the molecules and cause those to rearrange. Heat is measured in units of joules, and in the picture above, the flame is adding heat to the energy of, heat energy to the beaker of water. So I believe they're talking about this one. So this here is heat energy, and it's being added to the beaker of water, and those water molecules are now moving faster. And those fast moving particles of water are going to give us a indication of a higher temperature. The temperature of an object is the number is a number that indicates how fast on average particles are moving and how hard they are colliding. Some call it a degree of hotness. Temperature is measured in degrees Celsius. Uh, although there are a couple of other options if you're watching the American news you'll notice that they also use degrees Fahrenheit in United States of America. And in science, uh, we might use Kelvin, K, for a Kelvin. And that is an absolute scale. That means that at zero, nothing is moving. Uh, the Celsius scale has a negative values, right? So negative 10 degrees Celsius means things are moving slower, but they're still moving. And in fact, you have to go to negative 200 and something before you uh, reach the absolute zero. So 
If we think about the temperature of molecules, in a high temperature situation, we have very fast moving particles that are hitting each other very hard with lots of energy. In a low temperature situation, the particles are moving slowly and they're gently colliding. If you add a certain amount of heat to an object, the amount the temperature changes depends on a couple of things. It depends on how many molecules you're heating and what type of molecules they are. And I think we all know this uh, very carefully, uh, probably from baking, for example. In baking, you can wear a, uh, wear a oven mitt and stick your hand in an oven that normally would be too hot to touch, right? So if, you're, if you don't wear the oven mitt and you just use your skin, your skin would get a burn. But if you wear an oven mitt, then even though it's the same amount of heat in that, in that oven, the heat affects the oven mitt differently than it affects your own skin, so no burns. Here's a picture that did not print very well, so uh, I've, drawn my, I've drawn a little bit of a repair on this. There should be some water in this picture. So this picture is supposed to be uh, some water in a, in a container. It's supposed to look kind of like one container that looks like this and one container that looks like that. And the container with more liquid in it will have a smaller change in temperature. Meanwhile, a container with less liquid will have a higher change in temperature. And this is this, this you might do this all the time when you go to boil some noodles or boil some rice. If you use a small pot with a small amount of water and a small amount of rice or small amount of noodles, then usually it'll hit, the, it'll hit the, hot, the hot temperature faster than if you use a large pot on the same burner with a lot, lot of liquid. So this, temp, this experiment that you can even do at home, this shows that heat causes a change in temperature, but the amount of change depends on how much matter is affected. More matter, more matter requires more heat to reach the same temperature. We could do a little experiment on our oven. We could probably put uh, one, one small bowl, uh, a small pot of water on one burner, one large pot of water on the same size burner, and we would probably have to, we would find that we would have to turn up the, the larger burner uh, to a higher temperature to heat up that pot to boiling. Let's think about this. Let's think about another example of an experiment that we come into into contact with that has to do with heat and temperature. Let's think about the sun shining on the beach, which is would be pretty nice right now. It's uh, you know it's starting to become a sunny sunny day out there. So the sun adds the same amount of heat energy to both the sand and the water. Yet, the sand can be hot enough to burn your feet while the water is still cold. So the water can absorb that heat in a different way than the sand does. The sand seems to want to reflect the heat onto your foot and causing it to feel hot. Well, the water retains the heat. It doesn't share the heat with your body. And so the water sort of absorbs the heat. So heat causes different temperature changes for different materials. Uh, there are lots and lots of examples of this. Uh, we did the oven bit mitt as well as another example where the oven mitt is able to absorb the heat and not share it with your hand. The amount of heat it takes to raise the temperature of a substance by one degree Celsius is called the heat capacity. And this is a very important concept for weather. The heat capacity of different environments around the world have a great impact on how they interact with the energy coming from the sun. So the ocean, for example, will always kind of feel a little bit cool because the ocean water is able to absorb a lot of heat. Meanwhile, the desert, where there's very little water and a lot of sand will always feel very hot, even if they're at the same altitude or the same uh, alt lat latitude, even if they're at the same latitude where they receive the same amount of energy. So the heat capacity is measured in joules per degree Celsius, or J 
over degrees Celsius. Sometimes in some texts you might see J and then the degrees Celsius raised to the power of minus one. This means the same thing. Which substance, is, which substance has the higher heat capacity, sand or water? Check by doing a quick lab as described in class. Well, let's think about this. The amount of heat it takes to raise the temperature of a substance by one degree Celsius is called the heat capacity. So the larger the heat capacity, the more energy you need to absorb to raise the degrees. Uh, we unfortunately can't do this lab right now, but maybe we'll try to make a video of that or I'll find one for you uh, that you can check out. But the higher the heat capacity, let's write this out, higher the heat capacity, capacity the more heat the material can absorb so so for water would have a larger heat capacity than sand sand can't really absorb very much heat at all it just likes to sh to reflect it back onto your feet all right so i'm going to post the comprehension questions that follow as a Google form for you to do after watching this video. So please check out the stream on the classroom and we'll talk to you in the next video.